Hi guys, this is teacher David Ng. Thanks for watching my video. And okay, before I move on to AMAX Trigo, okay, today I'll be talking about sharing about AMAX trigonometry for IP year 3 max or sec 3 AMAX. And without further ado, let me go straight to what I supposed to share today about trigonometry in AMAX. Okay, probably let me just quickly recollect with you what exactly is trigonometry. Okay, let's say you have a triangle, right? Okay, it has to be a triangle triangle for this case. Let's say this is X, right? So you have uh, your A, B, and C. <clears throat> okay, probably you try to recall sine X means what? What does sine X means? Can you recall? A over C. Yes, A over C, opposite over your hypotenuse. How about cosine X? B over C. B over C, very good. How about tangent X? A over B. A over B, opposite over adjacent. Okay, basically your door castle. Okay, this uh, assume knowledge by now <laughs> because these are your secondary two stuff. I did mention to you when in sec two three go, what's the purpose of learning three go, right? <laughs> so I'll not be dwelling on that tonight. To tonight we'll be moving on to sec three A max three go. Okay, probably you also can recall your radian measure. High radian is how many degrees? 180. 180. Okay, these are assumed knowledge uh, <laughs> by now. So I won't I will not dwell on the proving why this is so because this one I've proven it before in another video. Okay, so today we're going to explore, right? Special angles. So why special angles? Special angles, right? Okay, let me draw out this table. Okay, you have a table here. Okay, this is your special table. So you have Okay, trigo function sine cosine tangent. Okay, special angles zero degrees or zero radian. Okay, 30, 45, 60. Okay, degree mode and radian mode. This part clear. Mm. 30 degrees is power over 6, 45 degrees is power over 4, 60 degrees is power over 3, 90 degrees is power over 2. Okay, degree mode and radian mode. Okay, this table right is an important table, and you need to 
know and understand, right? I don't remember la, how this table is drawn. <laughs> so I will, you do not need to memorize this table. I will show you how to remember this table without actually putting in effort to remember. So long you know how to count from zero to four, right? Like zero, one, two, three, four, right? You can know how to find the answer. Okay. Okay, this one very easy to remember, right? Is yeah. it easy? Easy all. Then I told you you know how to count, you you can remember, right? Can you see the counting? Zero, one, two, three, four. Mm. Okay, your certs are you need to be good in certs in order to derive this table. Okay, square root zero is zero. Zero divided by anything is zero. Square root one is one, right? So half, la, final answer is half. Square root two over two is still square root two over two or one over root two. Okay, it's the same thing. One over root two and square root two over two means the same thing. Okay, because of... Uh, Conjugate. Oh, you understand how I get this all? Oh? Root 2 over 2 is 1 over root 2. You understand now? Oh? Mm. Okay, root 3 over 2, you can't simplify further. It's still root 3 over 2. Okay, root 4 over 2, right? Square root 4 is 2. 2 divided by 2 is 1. Okay? Mm. So your search need to be at your fingertips in order to derive this table. So now to count, the rest is deriving using your search knowledge. Okay, then after that, I'm going to put like that. Oh, I remember that. Okay, <laughs> very easy, remember, right? Yeah. You reverse the order. But if you want to do that, right, you must remember the trigger function is listed sine cosine tangent this sequence. Okay, then here, right? Okay, not sure you remember this. Okay, are you aware of this? This identity? Are you aware of this identity? No. Okay, if no, I'm going to prove to you why why tangent is sine over cosine, a simple proving. Okay, this is simple proving. Why tangent is sine over cosine? Okay, this is deeper, right? Mm. Okay, sine theta. What is your sine theta? Sine theta is A over C, right? Yeah. Then cosine theta is B over C. Okay, then I claim that, okay, let's list out what's that, what is tangent theta first. Okay, tangent theta is A over B. Okay, A over B is your tangent theta. Then I say that tangent theta is sine theta over cosine theta, right? Mm. Okay, your sine theta is A over C, right? Cosine theta is B over C. Okay, a fraction divided by now, fraction is the numerator fraction multiplied by the reciprocal of the denominator. 
I can cancel my C, right? Isn't A over B equal to tangent theta? Yeah. So you can conclude sine theta over cosine theta is your tangent theta. Okay, so you're convinced now, uh, sine over cosine is your tangent. Uh. Mm. This is a simple proving here. Okay, so I'm going to erase this proving here because you do not need this anymore. So you're convinced that sine over cosine is your tangent. So if sine over cosine is your tangent, right? Zero divided by one. Uh. Okay, zero divided by anything is zero. Okay. Mm. So this one is half. Half divided by root three over two, right? Divide by three over root two will be multiplied by reciprocal, right? One over square root three is square root three over three. Okay, square root 3 over 3. Okay, you're convinced, huh? Why square root 3 over 3? Yeah. Okay, so this one I rewrite as 1 over root 3 or square root 3 over 3. Well, uh, half times two, yeah, one over root three. Okay, this one will be this over this is one, right? <laughs> it's the same guy, right? Mm. This guy over this guy is one. Okay, this guy over this guy. Divide by half is times two, right? Mm. Okay, can you see? It's times it's root three. Yeah. Then how about one divided by zero? <laughs> one divided by zero is what? Infinity. Okay, zero divided by one now, uh, not equal to one over zero. Uh, important concept. Uh. This one is zero. This guy is infinity. Okay, one is zero, the other is infinity. Zero divide anything is zero, but one divide by zero or, or anything divide by zero right, is infinity. Okay, can remember how to draw this table now? Yeah. Can now? Uh? <laughs> this mm. table not given an exam. Uh. You need to remember how to draw. <laughs> I did teach you how to remember this table. Uh. Quite straightforward. Uh. Mm. Okay. Okay, then the next part is the ratio of general angles. Okay, for trigonometry, right? For trigonometry, you need to remember this thing now. Okay, these are the four quadrants now. ASTC. Okay, what I mean by ASTC? A stands for all. All. S stands for sine. T stands for tension. C stands for cosine. Okay, how to remember in this sequence ASTC? Okay, ASTC, right? You remember this phrase? Add sugar to coffee. Okay, that's how you remember ASTC. <laughs> Make sense? Yeah. Or a funny phrase.
Okay, all science teacher are crazy. Okay, all science teacher are crazy. Okay, ASTC, can I see the ASTC? Yeah. Whichever phrase that makes it easier for you to remember ASTC. The sequence, uh. how come this sequence is important? <laughs> I'll explain now. Uh. Okay, what's the purpose of remembering ASTC? Okay, A stands for all. What does all mean? All means, right, all trigger function. All trigonometric function. Okay, all trigonometric functions. Okay. So what, what do I mean by down here is all trigonometric function? Okay. You have learned so far, right? You have learned the three basic trigonometric function, right? Yes, no? Yeah. Yeah. So effectively, there's only three trigonometric function. Effectively. Mm. La. But they are... They are other trigonometric functions such as secant, cosecant, cotangent. <laughs> that one I explain what it is um, either next lesson or later during this lesson. But you focus on sine, cosine, tangent first. Okay, sine, cosine, tangent, right, are the three primary trigonometric functions. So the A stands for all. All means all three trigonometric functions. So what, what do I mean by all three trigonometric functions? Okay, here you have to listen carefully. All three trigonometric function means, right, if I were to sign any angle, right, okay, that means all, okay, and from here, this juncture, right, okay, your, your geometry, uh, this is zero degree, this is 90 degree. Okay, zero degree, 90 degree. 180, 270. And 30 or 360, yeah, same thing. Okay, 0, 360, same thing. So between 0 to 90 degrees, right? Okay, if you have to take out your calculator and press, right, your calculator, right? Okay, let's say X is between 0 to 90 degrees, right? Okay, if x is between 0 to 90 degree, right? Okay, this is what it means. Okay, all means, right, all trigger functions are positive. Mm. Okay. Okay, all three goal functions are positive. Okay, positive sign then DE la, stands for positive. So if the angle ranges from zero to 90, right? Example, you press 50 degree, 60 degree, 45 degree, et cetera, right? Okay, we all these are angles between 0 and 90 degrees. So if you press any angle, like 1 degree, 2 degrees, so on and so forth, right, all the way to 90 degrees, right? Okay, they are all positive. Like sine 90 is 1, uh, cosine 90 is 0. <laughs> tangent, tangent 90 is infinity. Okay, but mm. 89 degrees, uh, they are all positive. Okay, 0 degree, 90 degrees, they are special angles. Okay, special angles. Correct. You press calculator, you can uh example you use uh 50 degrees, uh 50 degrees as the um test. You press calculator, sign 50 degrees, make sure it's in degree mode. Uh, you press calculator right now, sign 50 degrees will give you positive answer. 
cosine 50 degrees will give you positive answer. Tangent 50 degrees will give you positive answer. Correct? Correct? You can press calculator now to verify. Okay, these are all... Um, that means from 0 to 90 degrees, right? All trigger functions are all positive. And this is known as the first quadrant. Okay, first quadrant. Uh. First quadrant means uh, one full circle is 360 degree. Uh. So the first quadrant is 0 to 90 degrees. Pompic Harry, sine, cosine, tangent, right? Pompic Harry, all trigger function. They are all positive. Clear about that? Uh? <laughs> okay. Now I move on to second quadrant. Okay, second quadrant, right? Actually, I shouldn't draw this thing here. I should draw it in the middle. Let me move it to the middle first. Let me move this thing to the middle. Okay, let me move it to the middle. Yeah. Okay, second quadrant, right? Okay, second quadrant, your x lies between the angle uh, lies between 90 degrees to 180 degrees. For radian mode, will be pi over 2 to pi. Okay, radian mode. Okay, this one radian mode will be 0 to pi over 2. Okay, radian mode. Degree mode, radian mode. Okay, second quadrant, what does sine mean? S stands for sine. What does sine mean? Sine means, right, only sine function is positive. Okay, only sine function is positive. Okay, the rest are all negative. Okay, the rest are negative. Okay, you can press calculator, sine 120 degrees to get a positive answer. And you press calculator, cosine 120 degrees, you have a negative answer. Likewise, tangent 120 degrees, you have a negative answer. Clear about that, huh? Mm. Correct. <laughs> you press calculator, that's why you notice, right? Yeah. Okay. Then here, third quadrant. Quadrant, your X is between Okay, your X is between 180 to 270 degrees. Radiant mode. Okay, 270 will be 3 pi over 2. Okay, 3 pi over 2 is 270. So this one will be only tangent is positive. Okay, only tangent function, right, will yield positive result. Okay, the rest, right, is negative. You can press tangent 210 degrees. Okay, tangent 210 degrees. You get positive result. Sine 210 degrees, you are negative. Cosine 210 degrees, you are negative. Okay, ah? mm. this is the third quadrant. Okay, so obviously this one is the fourth quadrant, right? Yeah. Fourth quadrant, it lies between 270 to 360. Degrees. 3 pi over 2 to 2 pi. Okay, 
okay, in radian mode. Okay, fourth quadrant. Only cosine is positive. Okay, that's why you remember the C4. La. Only cosine function will yield positive result. The rest are all negative. Okay, these are important facts you need to remember because you need these facts, right, to solve your trigo equation. Example, right? Example, uh, example, a trigo function, right? Okay, sine x is negative 0 0.24. <laughs> this is an example, uh, a simple example. You're supposed to solve for x. You cannot press x equal to sine inverse negative 0 0.24. <laughs> you can't do that. You need to find basic angle. Basic angle means, right, the angle that's within the first quadrant, right, where your sine function, right, yields 0 0.24, not negative 0 0.24. So you have to find basic angle. Okay, basic angle. So your basic angle, if you were to sign inverse 0 0.24, right? Okay, my calculator will tell me 13.89 degrees, correct? Mm. Okay, when 13 do point. Know need to find, when do we know need to find basic angle? No, basic angle refers to the angle that lies between 0 to 90 degree. Oh. Okay, 13.89. Round off uh, to two decimal place. Okay, this is not x. Uh. <laughs> basic angle is not x. Uh. Basic angle is basic angle. Uh. x is x. Uh. Because basic angle is sine inverse 0 0.24. Okay, now I need to find x. X, uh, okay. Sine x is negative. Negative, uh, that means it's third or fourth quadrant already, right? Correct? Yeah. So it's third or fourth quadrant, right? If it's third quadrant, uh, Okay, fourth quadrant. Hey, wait, how do I know it's it's a third fourth quadrant? In four. Oh. Because negative what? Sign is negative. Oh, okay. You think about it, sign is negative. Must be third or fourth, right? Yeah. Cannot be first or second, right? <laughs> Must be third or fourth. So if it's the third quadrant, right, it will be 180 degrees plus 13.89. Mm. Okay, that'll give you 193.88. Oh, or 89, like 193.89. Then 360 minus 13.89, right? That'll give you 346.11. In other words, for every trigo equation, right, there's always two answer. There's at least two answer. Can be three answer, la, but there's at least two answers. Three answer is when it lies here, la, 180 degrees or zero degree or 270 degrees. Those you might have three, three answers. Mm. Okay, typically you have two answers. Okay. 
Okay, you can press calculator, right? Sign 193.89. See, you get 0 point, negative 0 0.24. No? Wow. Right, you got negative 0 0.24, right? Mm. Sign 193.89. That means you shift sign negative 0 0.24 by right. You should get you should get 193.89, but no, you got negative 13.89. <laughs> you know this. If you're the mm. shift sign negative 0 0.24, right? You would not get 193.89. You get negative 13.89. <laughs> Correct not? Mm. But if you write your answer as negative 13.89, uh, you will not get the marks in exam. Eh? Especially uh, the question wants you to give answer, right? Between 0 degrees to 360 degrees. That's why you got to employ this method. Understand now? Mm. Okay? Okay. Okay. Okay, now... Uh, Okay, you notice, right, your angle uh, goes this direction. Okay, zero, this way is positive, right? Mm. Okay. Okay, what happened if, uh, what happened if now, right, I go opposite direction? Okay, I'm going to go opposite direction. Okay, my ASTC, right, <laughs> what, what, is still ASTC, the same quadrant. Okay, ASTC is still ASTC <laughs> in this manner. Because my zero degree is still here. My 90 degree is still here. My 180 degree is still here. My 270 degree is still here, right? Mm. Okay, what happened if uh, I go negative direction? Negative direction. Okay, example, negative 45 degrees. Okay, this is my negative 45 degrees. Can you see? Well, this angle is 45 degrees, right? Mm. Oh, so positive 45 will be at the A, right? Yes. Okay, 45 degrees or is the absolute value, uh, but you know uh, this direction, right? This direction, right? implies a negative 45 degrees. Okay, so negative 45 right? degrees are... Yep. Do I write negative 45 degrees or 45 degrees? If you have absolute value, right? Absolute value, right? This is 45 degrees. But you know uh, this direction is negative direction. Okay, this direction, right, apparently, uh, apparently, right, is 360 minus 45 degrees. That means, right, your negative 45 degrees, right, is equal to 325 degrees. It's 315, sorry. Okay, negative 45 degrees is 315 degrees. Understand that concept? Is it three sixty minus forty five? Yes. Okay. Okay, three sixty minus one forty five. Okay, negative. If you count negative cycle right, negative direction right, it's negative forty five degrees. But if you count the other way right, it's three hundred fifteen degrees. You can see they actually equal. So it depends on not uh, you're seeing it from a positive point of view or negative point of view. <laughs> Understand the concept? Mm. Okay. Okay? Yeah. So let's say... <clears throat> okay, you have the basic angle. Okay, let's say... um. Okay, let's call this basic angle alpha. How about that? Okay. If alpha equal to theta, right? If alpha equal to theta, right? Okay, alpha is known as basic angle. Okay. 
A alpha is known as basic angle. Theta is the angle, right? You're subjecting it to trigonometric function. Okay. First quadrant is the simplest to understand. Huh? Okay, because you are just changing the alpha and beta. Because basically your alpha is your beta. And alpha is the basic angle. Okay, second quadrant. Huh? Second quadrant. Huh? Okay, point to take note, right? Basic angle, right? Okay, basic angle, uh, this one you must remember. Uh, basic angle, right? Always refer to okay, basic angle always refer to what? So called x axis, uh. because this is actually not xy coordinate. Uh. <laughs> do, you, do, you, yeah. do you realize this is actually not xy coordinate? Yeah, that's why my x axis is inverted commas. <laughs> okay, basic angle, right? Always refers to the angle between the line, this is called the line that portray the angle and the x axis. Make, make sense to you? Yeah. And in this case, alpha is the basic angle. Clear? Mm. Okay, basic angle always refer to the angle between D line, this is D line, that portray the angle and the x-axis. Mm. Okay, probably I can call it a horizontal axis. Okay, horizontal axis. Why is sine theta sine alpha? Sine theta is sine alpha, ma? Or what? Oh, okay. Or function. Or trigger function. Oh. Because your alpha is less than 90 degrees. Okay, basic angle always, right? Basic angle always lies in the first quadrant. Okay. Clear? Basic angle. Not theta. Uh. Theta is not basic angle. Uh. Basic angle is alpha. Clear? Mm. Basic angle is alpha. Uh. And alpha always lies in the first quadrant. Mm. Okay, alpha always lies between 0 to 90 because it's the basic angle. Basic angle means, right? Basic angle means, right? You, you sign inverse um, any decimal, right? <laughs> the answer that come out, right, is the basic angle. You sign inverse, cosine inverse, any decimal, right? Positive decimal, right? Okay, the angle that comes out is always the basic angle. And the angle that comes out always lies between 0 to 90 degrees. 
So your calculator, right, will only tell you what is the basic angle. Understand? Mm. Calculator will not tell you uh, values, the angle in other quadrant. Eh? You want to find the angle in other quadrant, right? Um, you got to do the necessary thing, la, which I'm going to um, bring up now, right now. <laughs> okay? Okay. So you clear what basic angle are. Yeah. Okay, it's basically the angle that lies between the line that you draw to portray the angle and the x-axis or the horizontal axis. Not vertical axis, uh, remember, uh, not vertical axis. Horizontal axis only. Clear? Uh? Mm. So if you were to draw something uh, and you said this is the alpha, the basic angle, that is wrong. Uh, that's not true. Uh. Basic angle will never lie between vertical axis and the line that you draw to portray the angle. Okay? Okay. Clear? Uh? Because some students, they forget. <laughs> because I mentioned horizontal axis, they forget <laughs> one year in, the other year out. Then they, they the right basic angle is this, which is wrong. Okay, not true. Uh. Mm. Okay, horizontal axis only. Okay, so second quadrant, right? Based on the definition of basic angle, right? So the basic angle will be this angle, right? Correct, not? Yeah. Okay, bear in mind, uh, bear in mind uh, the basic angle are all the same. Uh. Okay, let's say now I assign basic angle. Uh. Okay. okay, example 30 degrees. Uh. Okay, I choose an easy angle. So here is 30 degrees. Uh. Okay, this is 30 degrees. Okay. Okay, how far is your people, right? Okay, second quadrant, right? And second quadrant, your alpha is no longer your people. Uh. <laughs> second quadrant, alpha not people anymore. Uh. Okay, theta is 180 minus alpha. Mm, okay. Okay. Positive, la, still positive. I haven't go to a negative cycle yet. Negative cycle later. We still will say I positive. Because this is an important part I just now I didn't mention. This, this part is very important. So basic angle thing. Okay. Second quadrant, right? Okay, can I see this by theta? Second quadrant? Yeah. So theta lies between more than 90 but less than 180 right mm. in this case it's 150 uh. okay in this example it's 150 uh. clear uh? yeah okay sine 30 degrees right is half correct or not mm. Okay, sine 30 degrees is half, uh, remember? And your cos 30 is root 3 over 2, right? Alright, the yeah. table I showed you just now. Mm. Okay, tension 30 is half divided by root 3 over 2, right? So half times 2 over 3, la. so it's uh, 1 over root 3. La. 1 over root 3 is root 3 over 3. La. Okay? Okay. So root 3 over 3 is tangent 30. Okay. These are all basic angles, the, the answer for, for 30 degrees. Okay. Now I'm going to show you a relationship. Uh. Okay, sine 30 degrees. Okay, sine 150 degrees. Uh, a very important relationship. Okay, just like I said, sine 150 degrees is still positive, right? Yeah. So sine 150 degrees, since it is positive,
It is actually sine 30 degrees. I don't get it. Sine 150 degrees is also sine 30 degrees. Because second quadrant and sine is positive. Okay. Okay, throughout this whole quadrant, right, sine cosine tension, right, is always equal to the sine cosine tension of the basic angle in absolute value. Okay. You hear carefully, uh, in absolute value. Uh, <laughs> throughout this whole quadrant, right, all the four quadrants, right, sine cosine tangent, right, all three function, right, is also equal to sine cosine tangent, right, of the basic angle in absolute value. Okay, mm. I I mentioned in as an absolute value. Uh. okay. Now you 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 you. I show you this part. You understand what I mean by in absolute value. Okay, just like I said, sine cosine tangent right is equal to sine cosine tangent of the basic angle in absolute value right. Mm. Okay, this is what I meant. Okay, negative root 3 over 2. Okay. That is what I meant. Uh. Mm. Okay. In absolute value. That means all uh, the quantity you know. Uh, but sign you don't know. Sign you know it through all. Uh, knowing which quadrant the, the theta lies in. Understand, no? Yeah. So likewise, tangent 150, right? It's also tension 30, but in absolute value. I know I need to put a negative sign uh, because second quadrant tension is negative. Mm. Okay, you press calculator tension 150, right? It's actually negative tension 30. Then negative root 3 over 3. And tension 30 is root 3 over 3. Uh. <laughs> Can you see the pattern now? Yeah. You see the pattern now? Okay, mm. third quadrant now. Okay, third quadrant, let's say, is here, right? Okay, just now I told you the alpha, which is the basic angle, right? Always lie between the line that you draw, you, you draw to portray the angle and the x-axis, right? Which is this angle, la, correct now? Yeah. You notice throughout this whole time, uh, my alpha is constantly at 30 degrees. But my theta is changing all the time. Yeah. My theta. My theta, right, is 180 plus alpha. So it's 210. Yep. For this example. You learn the concept, right? <laughs> learn the concept. I'm showing you this example only. La. Because your alpha is not always 30 degree. La. Your alpha is any angle between 0 to 90 when you do the question. La. Okay, so theta is 180 plus alpha. La. So you have sine cosine tangent, right? Yeah. Okay, sine 210, 180 plus 30, 210 degrees. That I told you equal to absolute value, right? Mm -hmm. Of the same trigger function. Okay, same trigger function. And basic angle, right? Correct, absolute value is the same, right? Now the thing is all, where to put a negative, right? Third quadrant, only tension is positive, right? So the rest of the joker are negative. Make, make sense? Yes. Because you remember only tension is positive. Mm. Okay, you, you remember only tension is positive. 
So you can confidently wrote here tangent 30. Okay. Then the other two, right, sine cosine is negative sine 30 and negative cosine 30. Understand the concept, no? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, this part you clear. So this is 180 plus alpha. Okay, remember, uh, throughout this whole time is 180 minus alpha or 180 plus alpha. Uh, don't have 270, yeah. Uh. Don't have 270 minus alpha, not, not 270 minus alpha. In fact, this is not alpha, correct? The definition. Mm. Correct? This is not alpha, right? <laughs> alpha refer to here. Okay. I emphasize the horizontal axis, uh, correct? Remember? Mm. Uh, it's always basic angle always lie between, it always refers to the angle, right? Between the line you draw to portray the angle for theta and the x-axis or the horizontal axis. So in this case, alpha refer to this, this fellow here. Then theta is like that. Positive theta. La. Okay, positive theta. Negative even more confusing. La. Negative later than, than I explained. <laughs> okay, this is still positive cycle. Okay, then the last quadrant, right? The okay, last quotient will be this this guy here, right? So this is my alpha. Okay, because based on the definition of alpha, is the angle that lies, is the angle that's between the line that you draw to portray the angle for theta. Can you see my theta? Theta. <laughs> Okay, theta is, is, is almost one full round already. Okay. And the horizontal axis, that's your alpha. Mm. Okay, in this case, my theta will be 330, correct or not? Yeah. Okay, I'm going to erase this definition for basic angle uh, because I need the space here. Okay, can remember definition for alpha. <laughs> mm. Okay, so this quadrant is known as the fourth quadrant. ASTC, add sugar to coffee. Coffee stands for cosine, right? Mm. Okay, cosine function. So you have sine, cosine, tangent. Your theta is 330. Okay, theta 330, uh, self-explanatory. We all this 30 degree, so theta is 330. So sine cosine tangent. Okay, sine cosine tangent equal to absolute value of sine cosine tangent of the basic angle. Okay, I mentioned absolute value. Uh. That means I haven't input my sign. As in the sign, uh, positive or negative sign. Okay, now I need to decide where to input my negative sign, right? This is the fourth quadrant, right? <laughs> fourth quadrant only cosine is positive, right? Yeah. The rest are all negative. So sine 330 degrees equal to negative sine 30 degrees. And cosine 330 degrees equal to cosine 30 degrees. And tangent 330 degrees equal to negative tangent 30 degrees. Okay? Clear mm. about that? Huh? Yeah. You clear it, yeah? <laughs> ASTC? Yeah. Because you need this concept huh, <laughs> to do your trigo equation. This is a very important concept that forms the backbone of your Amex trigonometry. Okay, this concept clear already, yeah? Uh? Yeah. Okay, now I'm going to introduce just like just like I briefly mentioned negative, negative um, negative cycle, right? Negative angle, right? I briefly mm. mentioned now. Uh, Okay, that's why I show here that I cancel that I went back to positive, right? So now I'm going to go back to negative cycle. Uh. So this is my alpha. 
Okay, alpha is this way. Deeper, right? Deeper depends on no, you want to see it from the positive, positive cycle perspective or negative cycle perspective. Okay. Mm. So if you see it from negative perspective, or okay, it's negative 30 degrees. And don't forget your negative 30 degrees, right? Is actually 330 degrees. Okay, that that, that concept you're clear. Mm. Okay, you might think oh, negative 30 degrees are uh, refer to first quadrant. No, it still refers to the last quadrant. <laughs> okay. In other words, this quadrant here, right, whether it's negative 30 or positive 330, right, will that is always mean fourth quadrant. You won't see negative 30 degree means first quadrant. Eh? No way. Eh? No way. Eh? Negative 30 degrees is still fourth quadrant. Eh? Mm. Yeah, let me label my quadrant first. Huh? Okay, by now you should know how to label your quadrant already. ASTC. Okay, this is A. This is S. Here is T. Here is C. Okay, you already know what it stands for, right? So ASTC, add sugar to coffee. Okay, if you can't remember ASTC sequence, right? You remember add sugar to coffee. And the add stands for A, A stands for all. Okay? Clear all the part? Yeah. Yeah, add sugar to coffee. If you can't remember ASTC sequence, uh, remember this phrase, add sugar to coffee. That one, very easy to remember, right? Mm. Okay, add sugar to coffee. La. Nobody add salt to coffee. Actually, add salt to coffee also can. La. Because salt, S also stands for salt, <laughs> correct? So you want to add sugar, add salt up to you. So anyway, add sugar to coffee. That one is very clear. Okay. So negative cycle, right? Okay, negative when theta is negative 30 degrees, right? So your sine, okay, let's say sine cosine tangent, right? Okay. Because now we are running in negative cycle. Uh. So I'm going to start from fourth quadrant first. Uh. Okay, then it makes sense to you. So negative cycle is a little bit confusing. <laughs> okay. But if you understand the concept that I explained earlier, right, about the positive cycle one, right, the negative cycle um, just need a little bit of thinking. Uh, you can understand. Okay. You're ready? Yeah. Okay, if you're ready, uh, I'll continue. Okay, just like I mentioned, right? Negative 30 degrees, uh, you can read it in a perspective of positive cycle, right? Mm. All right? Yeah. Okay, this is cosine. Okay, then this fellow here is tangent. In other words, whenever you see negative cycle, right? Okay, negative cycle tends to mess up your brain, uh, correct or not? Mm. It does mess up your brain, right? Negative cycle. So what you can do yeah. is, right? Instead of being negative, uh, <laughs> you, you, you change from being negative to positive. Right? In life, it's like that, right? You don't think negatively, right? You think positive, right? Mm, yeah. In life, it's like that, right? <laughs> Correct? You, you you don't think negatively, right? Mm. Uh, you think positively. Because you think positively, right? What leads you to a uh, solution. You think negatively, right? Okay? Um, You get more negative. Uh. <laughs> then you mess up. Then, then 
it, it will worsen uh, worsen your solution. You'll worsen your answer and you will not get the eventual answer. Lah, or you'll be harder to get the eventual answer. Make sense? Mm. Make sense, huh? So you think positively in life. So likewise, you when you do Amex, right, you also think positively. So instead of thinking in the negative frame of mind, uh, negative direction, right, you think in a positive direction. That means you switch your negative 30 degrees, right? You switch it to positive, positive 330 degrees. That one can 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 be done, right? Yeah. Can be done, right? <clears throat> you just add 360. That, that'll solve the problem. Okay, whatever negative angle they give you, right? You just add 360 degrees. That that was that will solve the problem of it being negative. Make sense? Mm. Make sense, huh? Okay, just like I did mention, right? Sine, cosine, tangent in a range of uh three three zero, right? Correct? Yeah. Okay, the absolute value is sama sama the same, right? Mm. It's only the sign you have to take note of. So you copy and paste the absolute value first. Okay, absolute value. Not the final answer, uh, absolute value only. Uh. Okay, then you know two of it are negative, right? Okay, then you identify the quadrant. The quadrant is fourth quadrant based on this fellow here. Okay, based on the positive value of your theta. Make sense? Mm. Okay, based on the positive value of your theta, right? You, you identify the quadrant that angle theta lies in. Make sense? So once you identify the quadrant it lies in, right, you know it's fourth quadrant, right? And because you know it's fourth quadrant, you know that only cosine is positive, right? So the rest of the trigger function are all negative. Make, make sense to you? Yeah. That's how you identify, right? Which which trigger function, right? You need to put negative sign through the quadrant. Mm. Through the quadrant. Uh. So you need to understand, right, the angle that you subject to the trigonometric function, right, um, which quadrant it lies in when you are solving trigonometric equation. Okay? Understand, mm. uh? Yeah. So you need to know which quadrant it lies in. Uh. Once you know which quadrant it lies in, right, and you change all this to positive angle by adding 360 degree, then after that, you change it to sine cosine tangent and the basic angle and you input negative sign no, according to the quadrant. Understand no? this concept? Yeah. <laughs> Very important concept. Eh? Cannot forget. Eh? Mm. Cannot forget. Eh? This concept cannot forget. Eh? <laughs> okay, now the next quadrant is this quadrant. The third quadrant. Okay, the third quadrant, just like I mentioned, right? The alpha, which is the basic angle, right? Always refer to the angle between the line that you portray the angle and the x-axis, right? Or the horizontal axis. So my alpha will always be this. Lah. Okay, now because I'm talking about negative cycle, right? So this is my theta. Make sense? Mm. Okay, this is my theta. Lah. And my theta will be negative, negative ah, 150. How can I know this negative 150? Because from here to here is negative 180, right? Mm. Then I add 30, so it's negative 150. Oh, because I'm moving the negative cycle. Okay? But I told you don't think negatively, right? <laughs> Always think positively, right? Yeah. Yeah. So you have your sign negative 150. And your cosine negative 150. And your tangent negative 150. Okay. And this is actually your sign 210, right? Correct, 210, right? Mm. Here a little bit confusing already. Uh. Mm. Okay, how I get 210? 
360, okay, minus 100, negative 150 at 360. All right, that's why I told you at 360, right? Mm. Always at 360, yeah. Make it into a positive angle. Because 360 degrees is one full round, right? If you turn 360 degrees, right? Do you actually change your direction? You think about it. I ask you one question. If you turn 360 degrees, right? Do you actually mm -hmm. change your direction? No. No, right? Not at all, right? No. That is the reason why you add 360 degrees. <laughs> because you did not change your direction, no? Okay. Okay? That's why you add 360. Uh. Actually, you, you, you did nothing to the, to the direction. It's just that you change it from the negative perspective, right? To a positive perspective. Can you see? That's why you add 360. Okay, now positive perspective. The question is a lot easier to handle, right? Mm. So you write sine cosine tangent 30 degrees. Well, 30 degrees is your basic angle. Okay, that's why basic angle is important. Okay, now the question is all oh, two of them are negative. Which two? Sine and cosine is negative. How come? Because sine and cosine, right, is negative. Because 210 degrees lies in the third quadrant. Or negative 150 degrees lies in the third quadrant. <laughs> okay? Okay. Clear? Yeah. Then sine 30, you already know is half what, correct? Mm. So negative half. Okay, negative root 3 over 2. And this is positive. Positive, uh, half divided by this, right? 1 over root 3, uh, root 3 over 3. Okay? Mm. We all negative divided by negative is positive. Correct? Tangent is sine over cosine. Yeah. So third quadrant, tangent is positive. Clear? Mm. Okay, now second quadrant. Now we're going in the reverse <coughs> way because negative direction. Okay, likewise, your alpha is here. Alpha is not this. Huh? Alpha is this fellow here. So negative direction, right? This is my theta. Okay, this is my theta. Okay, theta is... Negative negative 210, right? Yeah. Okay, if you think negatively, not easy to do, huh? <laughs> so you have to think positive. So you convert it to positive by adding 360. So negative 210, you add 360, right? That'll give you 150. Mm. Okay, that concept you clear, huh? Okay, you add 360 degrees to make the angle into positive from a positive uh, direction. Because now it's in negative direction. So I add 360, it becomes positive direction. Positive direction will be easier to do. So sine cosine tension. And your basic angle is 30 degrees. Because alpha is 30 degrees. Okay, I write the absolute value first. Okay, now I need to input my sign, right? Then you got to identify which quadrant. 150 degrees is which quadrant? Second quadrant. Second quadrant only sign is positive. Sign is positive. So the other two is negative. 
So sine 30 is half. Negative cosine 30 is negative root 3 over 2. This is negative root 3 over 3. Okay? Mm. Okay, first quadrant will be very easy. Okay, first quadrant is my basic angle. Huh? But you don't forget, your theta is still going in this direction. Okay, your theta is not this direction. Huh? Your theta is still this direction. Negative cycle. So sine, cosine, tangent. Okay, what must I do here? <laughs> Change it to positive. Positive um cycle, right? Yeah. By adding 360. And then it's half. Then square root 3 over 2 and square root 3 over 3. Yep. Because this quadrant is very easy. Because it is the first quadrant. First quadrant, Tom, Dick, Harry, all three functions are all positive. So you no need to worry about which, which sign is negative because it's the first quadrant. First quadrant, all functions are positive. Okay? okay. Clear? <laughs> about the cycle? Yeah. Clear? Yeah. Because this one very confusing to a lot of students. And this is a very important concept uh, in Amex trigonometry. Okay, the next one I want to show you is this. Okay, the next one I show you is this. Uh. Okay, same thing, all four quadrants again. Okay, all four quadrants. Um, how should I show you? Can I mind? I still show the same. Can I mind? I show like that better. Okay, I'm going to draw four of these. Uh, to represent the four quadrants. Yeah, I'm going to show four of this. Okay, the four quadrants. Okay, the first quadrant, right? Okay, 90 degrees are. Huh? Mm. Okay, understand now. Huh? Mm. <laughs> understand what I mean by AB. Huh? AB is the length. So if this is a Cartesian plane, right? X axis, Y axis, right? The coordinate, that's this, this point is Q, right? The coordinates of Q is A, B, right? So my sine theta cosine theta and your tangent theta, right? Okay, this is square root A square plus B square. Okay, Pythagoras theorem. Okay, square root a square plus b square. Agree, huh? Okay. Yeah. So your sine theta, right, will be b b over square root of a square plus b square. Okay. 
Mm. That means oh, <laughs> you can find this angle, right? You can find this angle, uh, if they tell you what is this coordinate. <laughs> Understand? Mm. They will mix, they can mix uh, coordinate geometry and trigo together one, uh, I let you know, uh, in all level. Because in syllables, uh, Okay. Yeah, they can uh, if they want to. But usually your O-level examiners are very kind people. Uh, they won't do that, uh, usually. But you never know. Uh. Okay, likewise, cosine theta is adjacent over hypotenuse, right? So it's A over square root A square plus B square. Okay, so you can know your theta uh, if you know your coordinate of Q. Okay, likewise, or you can know the angle if they tell you the trigo identity, like tangent theta equal to how many? You can know this angle. Or you can know this coordinate. Uh. Understand? Mm. If they tell you tangent theta is how many, you can know the coordinate uh, of Q. That's how powerful it is. Uh. So tangent theta would be your B over A. Okay, this one okay, right? Your first quadrant, simple. First quadrant is simple, lah. Everything is positive. <laughs> okay? So far, so good, lah. Okay, second quadrant, right? Okay, second quadrant is this guy, ah. Okay, theta and alpha, ah. So this is theta and alpha, same thing. Okay, second quadrant. Same thing, I'm still going to use Q. I'm still going to use A, B as well. Or in this case, it's negative A and B. Understand, huh? Mm. Okay, so this is negative A here, huh? But absolute value will tell you this is A. Uh. Absolute value, this is A. The length, uh, length is an absolute value. Uh. But if it's a coordinate, uh, this will be negative A. Uh. Okay. Okay. Your sine theta. Uh, sine theta. Uh. Right, sine theta is sine alpha, right? Mm. Second quadrant. <laughs> then what is your sine alpha? <laughs> sine alpha is sine alpha. Okay, this one is a square root guy, huh? Okay, sine alpha would be b over square root a square plus b square. Yep. Okay, second quadrant. Okay, cosine theta. Cosine theta is negative sine alpha. I mean negative cosine alpha. Okay, negative cosine alpha. This guy is negative, what? Mm. Correct? You cut the same coordinate. This, this part is negative, x more. So it's negative a over square root adjacent over hypotenuse, ma. Um, a square plus b square. Okay. So obviously you have a negative answer, lah. We are second quadrant anyway, cosine. Then tangent also negative answer. Okay, your theta is this angle, ah, by the way. But you change it to basic angle so that I can use this triangle. Uh, understand what I mean? Yeah. So so tension theta, right? It's negative tension alpha, right? Then what is your tension alpha? Tension alpha is uh tension is opposite. Okay. 
We are negative, ma. So opposite over adjacent. Your tangent alpha is this guy, ah. Because here tangent theta is tangent alpha, okay? <laughs> can understand, ah? Yeah. Can understand, ah? Okay, third quadrant, ah. Third quadrant is here, ah. Okay, this guy is my alpha. This is my theta, right? Third quadrant. Okay, so your sine, okay, same thing AB, ah. Uh. Oops. Okay, this A, this B, uh. in this case, it's negative A, negative B, uh. correct? Negative A, negative B, right? Mm. Okay, negative A square is positive A square. Uh. Negative B square is positive B square. Uh. So you don't put negative sign here, it's okay. Understand? Uh? Mm. Understand why I put A square, B square? Uh? Yeah. Because your negative a square is positive a square, no different. Negative b square is also b square, no different. That's why I never put negative sign. That, that is the reason. Okay? So sine alpha, or in this case, sine theta. Sine theta is negative sine alpha. Cosine theta is negative cosine alpha. Because third quadrant. Tension theta is your is what? Tension theta is what? <laughs> tangent alpha. We got third quadrant. The quadrant tangent is positive. Okay. Okay, negative. Uh. What is your sine alpha? Sine alpha is this guy, right? Okay, understand not? Mm. Cosine alpha is cosine theta here, uh, first quadrant. So I just copy and paste. Uh. Okay. Okay, double check. Uh. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. Uh. So you get the same answer. Uh. Okay, tangent. Uh. Okay, tangent, oh, okay, I'm going to use this as the reference. I'm not going to cut and paste from here. Oh, because I'm going to show you why is it positive. Because, right, your tangent theta is your tangent alpha. Tangent alpha, right, is opposite over adjacent, right? Mm. Right, opposite is negative B, what? Adjacent is negative A, ma. negative over negative is positive, right? Yeah. Uh, that's why B over A, oh. <laughs> Understand? Mm. That's why you still end up with positive. That's why the quadrant tension is positive. Clear, clear now, huh? Mm. Okay, fourth quadrant, right? Fourth quadrant, this is my alpha. This is my theta. Okay, this is my triangle here. Okay, this is my 90 degrees. So this is A, this is negative B, <laughs> correct? Mm. Negative B, uh, this is A. So sine, sine theta, uh, sine theta is negative sine alpha. Okay. Negative sine alpha. Okay, here is square root A square plus b square. So um it would be negative b over square root a square plus b square. Okay. Okay. Sine then cosine theta. Last quadrant, uh, fourth quadrant, cosine is positive. So no negative sign. And what is your cosine alpha? 
Cosine alpha is adjacent over hypotenuse. Okay, understand now this logic. Mm. Tangent, right? Tangent theta is negative tangent alpha. What is tangent alpha? B over A. Negative B over A. Clear? Mm. Any question? No. Okay, this is a trigonometric ratio. Lah. So ASTC already covers. Trigonometric ratios of related angles in four quadrants also cover that. Okay, now I'm going to explain to you, right, this table. How to get this table out? Huh? Okay. I'm going to explain to you this table. Using ASTC. Huh? Okay, I'm going to explain to you this table using ASTC. Okay, sine, cosine, tangent. So first quad. Second quad. Third quad. Fourth quad. Okay, what I mean by first quad, second quad, third quad, fourth quad. Huh? First quad means right, your alpha is also your theta. And your alpha, or in this case, your theta, okay? This is what first quad mean, right? Mm. And alpha is your theta. La. Okay, do it, bear in mind, oh, I told you, right? Alpha is consistently <laughs> the basic angle, right? And basic angle always lie on the first quadrant, right? Mm. Second quadrant, uh, theta is not alpha anymore. Uh. Theta is between 90 to 180. Okay, theta not alpha anymore. And alpha is constantly between 0 to 90, yeah, as I mentioned here. Okay, then this one, your theta is 180 to 270. Okay, or pi radian to 3 pi over 2. Okay, be familiar with radian also, eh? not just angle. Eh? Mm. <clears throat> familiar with radian also. Eh? So this is zero to pi pi over four pi over two. Okay, pi over two is ninety lah. Okay, then fourth quadrant, right? Okay, three pi over two to two pi lah. So two seventy to three sixty yeah. Okay, you clear what, what I mean? Huh? So you need to be familiar with your radian measure also. Huh? No, not just degree measure. Huh? Both, huh? both you need to be familiar. Okay, first quadrant, right? Okay, because over time, right, they'll ask you lah, to 
to simplify some angles. Uh. Okay. So example, sine 30, right? Okay, or rather sine theta. Uh. Okay, sine theta is sine alpha. Okay, clear. Mm. Because first quadrant just follow. <laughs> because theta is your alpha, first quadrant. Second quadrant, right? Second quadrant only sign a bytes. Okay. Second quadrant only sign a bytes by the law. Okay, you need to understand how to derive this out. Mm. Okay, second quadrant. Third quadrant. You have to identify the quadrant first, uh, as I mentioned. So third quadrant, right? Okay, third quadrant. Third quadrant only tension is positive. Fourth quadrant. Okay, fourth quadrant, everyone is negative except for your cosine. Because you're going to need this when you <laughs> simplify your trigger. Uh. You need to know when to put a negative sign. Uh. <laughs> okay? So it depends on okay. the quadrant that your theta lies. Uh. Make, make sense to you? Mm. Okay, <laughs> then uh, important thing. Uh, sign negative people right okay how to remember this negative theta means fourth quadrant right <laughs> make sense mm. fourth quadrant mm. right so i'm going to negative it Cosine negative theta fourth quadrant, right? So nothing happens. <laughs> Makes sense? Yeah. That means you read this as the fourth quadrant. All these will be tested during your exam. Uh, I let you know. Okay? Negative angle. Uh. Any question? <laughs> No, ah. Uh? No. No question, ah. Uh? No. Yeah, I'm going to go through what example with you. Ready? Yeah. Okay. Question, ah. Uh? Simplify, right? Okay. Simplify or evaluate, lah. Okay. Simplify or evaluate. Okay, simplify or evaluate. Without calculators, huh? 
Okay. When they, in exam, right, when they tell you without calculator, right? <laughs> going exam, you have calculators with you. <laughs> so they cannot tell you don't use calculators, right? Because paper one, paper two, you have calculators with you. So what they do, right, is right, they'll say simplify or evaluate. <laughs> They'll, they'll add this clause. Huh? In your textbook, they'll say simplify or evaluate with it without using a calculator. In exam, oh, the question will be simplify or evaluate showing answers in search form. Okay, it's the same kind of question. Mm. Okay, insert form means you can't use calculator. Lah. <laughs> they don't want you to press calculator, sign 210, then get the answer, then write the answer. Lah. That, that's not what they want you to do. They are not testing whether you know how to press calculator or not. Lah, okay, they are testing whether you know how to manipulate using your search. So sign 210 degrees, right? Okay, identify the quadrant. The quadrant is third quadrant, right? <coughs> right, third quadrant, right? Yeah. Basic angle is 30 degrees, right? Mm. Agree? Yes. Third quadrant, so sign is negative. Uh. <laughs> Understand? Mm. Okay, step number one. Identify quadrant. Okay, step number one, identify quadrant. Okay, which quadrant? Third quadrant. That one, quite quite simple. Lah. You can identify. Lah. So once you identify quadrant, it's third quadrant, right? Third quadrant, then you ask yourself, lah, um, do I have a negative sign? Yes. Your third quadrant sign is negative. Then identify basic angle. Okay, identify basic angle, so no problem, right? Mm. Okay. Third step, huh? Okay, once you know your basic angle, right? You can recall just now, no? the first table that asks you to draw, right? Sign 30 is half, right? Correct, sign 30 is half, right? If you forget the table that you draw, right? Never mind. Ask calculator. Although they say cannot press calculator or answer in search form, right? You can still press your calculator. You have nobody trying to know you press your calculator for this question, ma, because you're just trying to verify something. You want to verify whether sine 30 degrees is 0 0.5 or not, right? So you press sine 30 degrees. Your calculator will show you 0 0.5. So you know it's half. But you don't put half here, la. you put negative half. Because sign 30 is half. Understand? How to, eva how to evaluate. Okay. Okay? Can. Can, uh? mm. Okay, another example. Uh? Okay. Cosine. Negative. Three pi over four. Okay, negative three pi over four. Identify the quadrant. <laughs> okay, here to here is pi over two, right? Mm. Pi over two is two pi over four, isn't it? Now I have 3 pi over 4, right? Yeah. Because now it's, you're doing radiant mode. Lah. Okay, you need to identify the basic angle, right? Basic angle will be pi, pi minus 3 pi over 4, right? Pi is 4 pi over 4. 4 pi over 4 minus 3 pi over 4 is pi over 4. 
So your basic angle is power four. Uh. And you identify a third quadrant already, right? Mm. Understand? Mm. Because you identify the quadrant, which is the third quadrant, and you identify the basic angle, then you know it's negative. La. Negative cosine pi over 4. And cosine pi over 4, the okay, pi is 180 degrees, right? 180 divided by 4 is equal to 45 degrees. So cosine 45 degrees, you can ask good friend calculator, right? Okay, your calculator will not tell you root 2 or 2. La. Your calculator will tell you 0 0.70710681812. That means, right, you need to be familiar with your calculator, right? In a sense that when you see it's 0 0.7071, blah, blah, right? You know it means root 2 over 2. You understand what I mean? Yeah. Because your calculator is not going to show you root 2 over 2. Your calculator is going to show you 0 0.7071. If you press calculator cosine pi over 4, that means you need to know uh, 0 0.7071, right? Means uh, root 2 over 2. And with a negative sign. Because this is the third quadrant. Clear? <laughs> How to do? You clear? Yeah. yeah. You clear? Uh? <laughs> I'm going to show you an elbow example. Okay, given that okay, given that P and Q are angles are uh, angles in the same quadrant. So P and Q are two different angles, but they are in the same quadrant. Okay, such that such that sine P is equal to negative 12 over 13. <clears throat> okay, negative 12 over 13. And tangent Q is equal to Okay, over 13. Okay, probably this one is tangent Q is 2 over 13. Okay, find the value. Find the value without using calculator. Find a value of one cosine P part two tangent P part three sine B sine Q part four. Cosine Q. Okay. That's the question now. Uh, without using calculator. So how to find? Okay, P and Q are two different um two two different angles, uh, but they lie in the same quadrant. Okay. Sine P right is negative. That means P right lies in what? Which quadrant? Um, okay, you think carefully, ah. Uh. Negative, right? Sign negative, right? Second. Second. 
sign is negative. <laughs> so lies on the third or fourth. Oh, yeah. Your sign is negative. Third or fourth, huh? Okay, Q lies at where? Second or third. Okay, Q, tangent is positive, right? Positive. No, second, second or fourth? Eh? Positive. Oh, fourth. Eh, no, no, positive. no, third, third, third. <laughs> third. Third. First or third? Okay, Q lies on first or third, correct or not? Yeah. Okay, P lies on either third or fourth, right? Q lies on either first or third, right? Then they already tell you P and Q lies on the same quadrant, right? There's only one conclusion, right? <laughs> Correct or not? Mm. So confirm is third quadrant. Uh. Agree? Yeah. Third quadrant you draw like that. So this is my P. Okay, this is my angle P or P is like that. Okay. So I can draw like that. Uh. Okay. Um 12 over 13, right? Sign, right? Sign is opposite over hypotenuse. Okay, understand why there's a negative five, negative trouble. Yeah. Understand now, uh, X, Y, axis. <laughs> hypotenuse is always positive one. Uh. Okay? Take note, uh, hypotenuse, the length of the hypotenuse is always positive. Uh. It will not be negative. Uh. The negative only applies to the X or the Y uh, axis. So third quadrant, P, this is 95, this is 93. 5, 12, 13, uh, the, the side in a uh, triangle, triangle, Pythagoras theorem. Okay, so you identify okay. the side already, right? Okay, yeah. same thing. Lies the same quadrant, right? So this is my angle Q. Uh, 2, 13, right? Okay, but this tension. <laughs> tension is opposite over adjacent, right? So you have to put your negative, right? One six nine, thirteen times thirteen is one six nine, right? One six nine plus four, uh, one seven three. Okay, your Pythagoras theorem now uh, will tell you this length is square root one seven three. Okay, ah. Uh? Mm. But the theorem is assumed knowledge already. Like, I wouldn't dwell on it already. Okay? So this length is square root 173. So once you have all the length ready, right? You can plug in your value, right? Mm. Okay, once you have this all, actually usually for me, right? Once I establish a triangle, right? I always have a habit of writing sine, cosine, tangent out, right? Okay, sine P is opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine P is adjacent over hypotenuse. Clear? Mm. Tangent P will be opposite over your adjacent, right? Mm. Negative 12 over negative 5 is 12 over 5. Lah. Certain things can do mentally one now, so you just write out like that. Then here will be sine cosine. Okay, sine Q opposite over your hypotenuse. Okay, 
then here will be cos cosine q right adjacent over your hypotenuse. Tangent will be what? Opposite over adjacent, right? Mm. Okay, you end up in positive. Then you can always double check you do it correctly la, by checking the sign. Third quadrant, ma, because you identify the quadrant, third quadrant, right? So your tangent is all positive. The other two is negative. Make sense? Mm. Okay, the question asks you for cosine P, right? What is your cosine P? Cosine P is negative 5 over 13. Clear this part? Yeah. yeah. Then your tension P is 12 over 5. Okay, part three is sine Q. Sine Q is, okay, this one you can rationalize. Uh. Okay, rationalize you have this. Uh. Yes. Understand why. Uh. Mm. Then cosine Q, same thing, rationalize. Okay, never leave your answer in decimal. Eh? Because they're asking for certs, ah, this kind of question, <laughs> most of the time. Mm. Even they never explicitly tell you leave in third, ah, you still leave in third. Eh? Don't leave in decimal. Eh? You leave in decimal, you get penalized. Ah. Let like you know this. Mm. Okay, ah. okay, then there's another special angle I need to mention. Ah. Complementary angles. <laughs> that part I haven't covered. Okay, let me cover complementary angles first. That part I never mentioned just now. Okay, now I'm going to mention complementary angles. So what is complementary angles? Okay, I'm just going to draw a very simple right angle triangle. Okay. Mm. Complementary angle will tell you all. Okay, this is your complementary angle. Okay, this is complementary angle. Uh. <laughs> okay, I'm going to explain to you how come it's like that. Uh. <laughs> okay, your sine theta, right? Okay, your sine theta is opposite over hypotenuse. Correct? Mm. Okay, if you examine closely, uh, B over C is also your cosine 90 minus theta. Correct? Yeah. I cosine this angle is adjacent over hypotenuse, huh? B over C. Then B over C is actually sine theta. So sine theta is cosine 90 minus theta. That, that's the relationship. Huh? Okay? Mm -hmm. that, that's why, that is the reason why sine theta is equal to cosine 90 minus theta or cosine pi over 2 minus theta. Okay, radian mode, degree mode. Clear? Mm. 
Okay. Then the other one, oh, cosine theta, right? If I examine the triangle, right? Cosine theta is adjacent over hypotenuse, right? Mm. A over C is actually your sine 90 minus theta, right? Ninety minus theta refer to this angle la. So ninety minus theta, I sign this angle is a over c, and a over c is your cosine theta. I understand the logic. Yeah. So therefore, cosine theta equal to sine ninety minus theta. This is called complementary angle relationship, la. Mm. Okay, radian degree. Understand now? Okay, mm. tension theta. Uh. Tension theta is what? Tension theta is opposite over your adjacent. Okay? B over A. Uh. But if I tension this fellow, uh, Sorry, 90 minus theta. Okay, I tangent this angle is opposite over adjacent, right? Mm. You can see the relationship now? Yeah. Basically, you are saying all. Oh, agree, right? Mm. Okay, this is what you're showing now. So your tension theta is equal to reciprocal of tension 90 minus theta. Or 1 over tension Pi over 2 minus theta. Clear? Huh? <laughs> this one. Can I understand? Huh? Yeah. Complementary angle. Okay, I'm yeah. just going to show you one last example uh, regards to this kind of question. Okay, one last example. Yeah, two hours, teach non stop, <laughs> three go. Usually, I don't teach two hours, right? <laughs> Correct? Yeah. Usually, do I teach two hours? No, right? Okay. okay, this question, right? Okay, they just tell you sine 30 is A la. Mm. Okay, then they ask for okay, express cosine sixty degrees okay, express in terms of A. Okay, express in terms of A, part 1, cosine 60. 
part two, co cosine 30, three are sine 60, and part four are Okay, tangent, tangent one, uh, 150. Okay, let's say, uh, let's say the question is like that. Uh. So sine 30 is A, right? Sine 30 is A. Okay, opposite over this. Uh. Okay, then the length here, right, will be square root. 1 minus a square. La. Agree? Mm. Agree, all? You can deduce this 60 degrees, la. correct or not? Yeah. Okay. So sine 30 is a. Agree, all? Mm. Okay, cosine 30, right? Adjacent over hypotenuse. Okay, or opposite over hypotenuse, sine, sine 60. Okay, then after that, uh, okay, I already found my cosine 60, right? <laughs> I already found my cosine 30, right? I already found my sine 60 also, right? Correct, one, two, three, solve ready, right? Mm. All right, remember this formula? Yeah. Okay, sine 150, uh. Okay, why is your sine 150? <laughs> Second quadrant, right? Basic angle, right? Mm. Remember? Why is your yeah. cosine 150? Basic angle, second quadrant, so negative sign. Agree? Yeah. Okay, then you see, oh, tangent 30. What is your tangent 30? Tangent is what? Tangent is what? Tangent is opposite over adjacent. Opposite over adjacent, but you need to put negative sign la, because they're asking for negative tangent 30. <laughs> okay, very common question in exam. La. Your school is capable of setting this kind of question. Mm. That means you need to know how to twist and turn your, your stuff. La. Okay, they can ask a lot of questions, they can ask part five, they can ask. La. Okay, because your 30 degrees, right, is pi over 6, correct, no? Mm. They can ask, huh? Okay, they can ask this kind of question. Or they can ask, huh? Um, okay, they can ask this question also. Okay, your school is capable of setting kind of question, huh? <laughs> you know what to do? Mm. Be part five, part six, you know what to do? Oh, I won't do it. I won't do it. I don't know how to do really. You know how to do? Five and six? I think so. Okay, first you need to um, okay, convert this all to radian, huh? Your 30 degrees, you change to pi over 6. Uh. Okay? Mm. 
thirty is pi over six, ah, hundred eighty divided by six is thirty, what? Mm. Then sixty is two pi over six, right? Two pi over six is pi over three. Okay, so you convert to radian already, right? Okay, they're asking for sine five pi over six. Okay, which quadrant is this? <laughs> sine pi over six, which quadrant is this? Mm. Okay, a good guess. Second. Yes, second quadrant. Okay, second quadrant sine is positive, right? Okay, you identify second quadrant, right? So sine function and it's positive, right? Okay, basic angle is pi over six. Can see that, all. Mm. Then pi over six is what? A. Sine sine pi over six is what? A opposite over hypotenuse. Okay, so part five, answer is A. In terms of A, ah. Okay, part six, ah. Cosine Wait. negative, yes. Wait, how do I know? Um, basic angle is pi over six. Uh, you know, ma. You know is pi over six. <laughs> how you know? Pi radian minus pi pi over six, oh. You identify second quadrant, or correct? Yeah. Earlier on, you identify second quadrant, no? Mm. Oh, Unsure, okay. sketch out. Mm. Unsure, sketch out. Mm. I'm very sure already, la, so I no need to sketch out already. If you're unsure, la, can't see clearly, you sketch out. If you're not familiar with radian now, you can change this to degree, but you label your drawing using radian now. Mm. How to change the degree? Change the pi to 180 degrees. That means so you can change this to five multiplied by 180 divided by six. Press calculator, la. then they'll tell you the angle in degree. Then once you know the angle in degree is 150 degrees, right? Then you'll know it's second quadrant, no? <laughs> Understand? Mm. But you still label your thing using radian, no? Clear? Mm. Clear? Yeah. Then cosine, I told you about negative angle just now, right? Okay, this is the magic about cosine, huh? Okay, this is the magic about cosine. Huh? Mm. Magic, huh? <laughs> remember. Huh? Okay, 5 pi over 6 is second quadrant, right? Mm. Okay, second quadrant. So you have negative huh? cosine pi over 6. Understand? Yeah. Then your cosine pi over six is how many? Pi over six or oh? adjacent over hypotenuse. Oh? Okay, this is the answer. Any question? <laughs> no. No ah. Uh? Exam should come out on this kind of question. Hundred percent sure. <laughs> Three go. Okay, if you understand everything right, you can do your practice now, one to six. Okay. Okay, practice now, one to six. You complete it by tomorrow. Now it's very late. <laughs> mm. Then your homework. If practice now, one to six clear, right? All correct, right? You do exercise 9A. Question trough to 20. That's provided, okay. provided um your practice now question are all correct. Huh? Mm. 
if you practice down question unsure or wrong, you start from base uh exercise 9a question one. You do from one to twenty la, if your base your practice now question got mistake. If perfect okay. answer all correct, you start from question twelve. Okay. Okay. Mm. That's all for today. Any question? Don't have. Don't have. Huh? I see you next week. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Hi, guys. This is teacher David Ng. Thanks for watching my video in YouTube or in Facebook. Yeah. So um, if you like my videos lesson, do like and subscribe to my channel. You can click the subscribe button right here at the bottom right corner so that you could receive notification whenever I upload a new video. So I hope you have learned something from my video lessons in Amex trigonometry today. So I wish students all the very best in their endeavors in their Amex for those in IP year three or in SEC three. So once again, thank you for watching my video. I look forward to see you in my next video lesson. Thank you. Bye-bye.